Hi guys and welcome back to my C++ for game development series and in this video we'll be taking a look at pointers. So a pointer is basically a variable which contains a memory address. So every variable, every function is going to have its own memory address. So that's the place where it is stored inside your computer memory. Now a pointer in itself will just store a memory address. And depending on which type of variable you're using, you will use that type of pointer. I will get to what I mean by that. So let's say we have a variable called x and it's of type integer. Let's initialize the value to 5. Now let's go ahead and try to use a pointer to point to x. So basically we want to store the memory address of x. So you can use it for faster access. And we will also later see that it can be used for dynamic memory allocation. I'll get to what that is. And the other advantages as well, you can see on the screen. So in order to create a pointer, you use this asterisk operator. So this in itself, int star, this in itself is a type. So int pointer is how you would read it. So int pointer ptr equals x is going to be wrong. You're supposed to use ampersand x ampersand basically says address of so if i type in any other object or any other entity over here it's going to be the address of that if you have let's say another variable y and you put ampersand y it's going to be the address of y now one more thing to note is that this asterisk right here it does not succeed int but it precedes ptr in the declaration. So what I mean by that is let's say I do int ptr comma y and let's go ahead and do something like this y equals ampersand x and you see that you get an error over here. The reason is y is actually just an integer because this star right here this operator actually precedes ptr so each time you create another variable you would have to give this operator and if i were to now go ahead and type in ampersand x it's going to work so just that's just one thing to note generally you'll just declare one per line so it doesn't matter even though int pointer in itself is a type it actually precedes your variable name rather than succeeding your int keyword so now let's go ahead and look into pointers to pointers. So you can actually use this, you know, recursively. So let's say you want to have an address to a pointer. You could do that as well. So I'll just delete this Y right here. We don't really need it. So if I go ahead and type in int star star. So this is going to be a pointer to an int pointer. So let's just call it PTR2 equals ampersand ptr so this is going to work totally fine as well now let me just print a few things so it's clear for you guys so i'm going to print it out so std c out and i'm going to print out x so i'm going to go to the next line and i'm going to print out ampersand x and I'm going to go to the next line and let me go ahead and print out PTR this time and let's print ampersand PTR let's go to the next line and let's just go ahead and print ampersand PTR2 or rather PTR2 now if you understand this much I think you would understand what ampersand PTR is going to print anyways I mean ampersand PTR too so let's go ahead and run a debugger and over here you see a bunch of random values these are in hexadecimal that's the reason it's like this and if you were to observe the first thing is 5 5 is obviously the value of x which is pretty straightforward ampersand x is going to be the address of the variable x and obviously the same thing is stored in ptr so we get the same value so basically the value of ptr is going to be the address of x 
so this is where it is stored in the memory you can actually use the debugger to actually see the contents of the actual memory as well however that is out of the scope of this series since we are focusing on what's needed for game development anyways even the addresses don't matter it's just important to know what is stored here so these two are obviously the same again address to ptr and ptr2 so basically even ptr has its own memory address so even this has to be stored somewhere in memory so the address of that is stored in ptr2 or if you type in ampersand ptr it pretty much means the same thing now what if you have a pointer but you wanted to get the value at that location so now if we are using only ptr let's say we are not allowed to use x and we are only allowed to use ptr so how would you print 5 i mean 5 in the sense not manually but by 5 i mean the value of x so for that you would use the asterisk once again so the same star operator is going to be used so if you were to precede your variable name with this you're going to get the value at that memory address so if i were to go ahead and run this oops i accidentally typed two here so if i were to run this let me go ahead and run this once again as you can see we get five and we used only ptr and if you just type in ptr you're going to get the address of x and ampersand ptr will give you the address of ptr so this is how you use pointers at a very basic level obviously all of this translates to any data type not just integer this was just the simplest example you could use a float you could use a double you could use a car you could use an object as well doesn't really matter there's no requirement to you know complicate the example now let's go ahead and talk about dynamic memory allocation now we are using x over here but let's say after this we will never actually use x or if you were to take a scenario in a game you would have your character and once a character dies once the health of the character is zero there is no real requirement to store it in your memory it's an absolute waste of memory so what you're going to do is you're going to allocate and deallocate the memory at runtime that is when you're running the program what happens here is this memory is going to be pre-allocated when you start the program however in most cases you would not want that in a game let's say for example you are in your warm-up session and you don't actually have a character or let's assume you're in the menu at that time there is no real requirement to have memory allocated for your player character so only once you join the game and you have to control your character that is when you would create your character however when you do allocate memory dynamically you get access to its pointer and that's what you're really going to use at the end of the day. So I'll just show you guys how it works with an example. So in C++, in traditional C++ I should say, we use the new and delete keywords. Note that if you are actually practically doing something, I highly recommend you shift over to smart pointers, particularly unique and uh, shared pointer. The reason is, it's much more memory safe and you would prevent memory leaks. So what's a memory leak you may ask? A memory leak is basically a case where you forget to delete your uh, dynamically allocated memory. So that much memory goes to waste is basically what a memory leak is. I will demonstrate that anyways. So let's go ahead and create. Let's use the auto keyword just to make our job easier. Auto let's say let's just call it character even though we'll just create an integer we'll just call it character just to you know kind of simulate the kind of entity we are going to have obviously this is still an integer but that's not the point anyways so character equals new int so if you were to observe if you were to hover over this you would see the type is int pointer so you can use int pointer over here basically now this is dynamically allocated memory so now unless you actually delete this this is going to stay in your memory as well as this memory will not be allocated as long as your code reaches this line 
so let's say i do something like this so i'll include thread you don't need to know what i'm exactly doing here but basically i just want to give a delay of two seconds so i'll just put a simple line of code here std this thread sleep for so i'm going to give a delay of two seconds std chrono seconds so i'm going to say give a delay of one second and i'll also go ahead and delete this delete delete character now if i were to run my code you would observe it took one second to actually complete this and one more thing to note is that this memory was not allocated at the start of the program when you started the program this was not a thing character was never an entity so if i were to just go ahead and say something like if character this basically is going to check if this is a valid memory address so let's just go ahead and do the declaration on top so that we do get a valid you know a uh, variable name so character equals new int so if character we are going to just print out is valid is valid i'll just go ahead and end the line over there and what we can do is we can go ahead and print this once again over here as well and over here as well we are going to print is valid uh, let's just go ahead and name it so let's just say three two and one now if i were to run this as you see we do get an error over here what we can do to get rid of this is just use null ptr so we can just initialize this to a null pointer so it points to nothing so as you see we get two is valid and as well as we get three is valid now let's go ahead and see what has actually happened now let's try to do this now this is not something you should be doing but let's also go ahead and print out the value at character okay and just another note I, here this is not getting printed anyway let's just delete this line and what we can do is as soon as we allocate this we can say character equals 10 now if we go ahead and use this as you guys can see we get 2 and we get 10 over here so I have to stop this new line thing I'll I put it after this so backslash n is going to go over there all right so as you guys can see we got 10 over here as expected however if I just go ahead and do the same thing right here what you would notice is that you get an exception and this is the very reason i advise you guys not to use the new and delete operators so if you do have a dangling pointer like this what happens is you are going to get an exception like this and it will eventually crash your program this is a very very common exception which occurs obviously you can put this in a try catch block and stuff but anyways so this is basically it now this memory is no longer valid so this is no longer occupying any memory just note that so that's basically a gist of dynamic memory allocation now std vector which is the array class which we talked about in the previous video or a few videos back basically uses dynamic memory allocation and it handles all the allocations as well as deallocations on itself so that's one thing to note so this way you can save memory as well as you know create and destroy entities at runtime and one more thing that i did forget to mention is in dynamic memory allocation now another reason you would want to dynamically allocated memory is because 
your program stack size is going to be limited to a few megabytes beyond that you would have to use dynamically allocated memory you can actually see that when you do something like this so in a of thousand thousand let's say i do something like this if you wait for a while you would actually get a warning over here so let's try a larger size so let's say 50000 so if i actually go ahead and hover over this it says the function uses 20000 bytes of stack consider moving some data to the heap actually it's not 20000 it's 200000 so it's 200 kilobytes so in this case you would want to dynamically allocate memory using something like the std vector or something like that so that's the use of dynamic memory allocation but one thing to note is that if you do have larger data structures you, it will take a bit of time to find the memory although it's negligible for modern standards for modern computers and for the amounts of memory that we have it's really not a problem but still that's one thing to note if you have really huge amounts of data this will be a time consuming process all right so what's the next one basically what i mean by this is let's say you have a function used to refer large data structures so let's say i have a function void my function or something like that don't mind the naming convention and let's go ahead and create a struct struct let's say large and let's go ahead and have some member over here let's say we had an integer a float or something let's just go ahead and create something like a vector or rather let's go ahead and just create one element anyways uh, you get the idea let's say we have a double double uh, x is equal to 5 let's say we have a double y equal to 10 let's say we have a double z equal to 3 all right so now this in total is going to be 24 bytes however your memory address is going to be equal to the word count of your computer so let's say you have a 64 bit processor your word count is going to be 8 bytes 64 bits that is 8 bytes so typically it's going to be 8 bytes but depending on what sort of a system you're using maybe you're uh, developing something for you know microcontroller or something something where you know you won't have your typical 64 bit architecture that's where you would have different word count in this case let's say we have a function which takes in a large okay uh, let's not bother about what's actually going to happen in this function now if you were to do this what happens is your whole large struct is going to be called so 24 bytes of data will be copied into this dummy variable so obviously this is going to be a copy of this However, this is going to be time consuming and is going to reduce the performance of your code when you have large data structures. So what you do is you pass in a large pointer and you pass in the address of the variable which you want to pass in. So in that case, you would be passing in only 8 bytes and you'll still have access to all the data over here. However, note that if you were to modify something using a pointer, you are going to modify the actual data over here. So all the changes will reflect back to what you have over here so that's just one thing to note and just another point here let's say you declare something like int a of 10 this a variable right here it's almost the same as saying this is a pointer and 10 integer variables uh, worth of memory is belonging to this array is what i mean so just know that there's not really much significance with this you generally use it along with this operator as well but note that if you were to just print out a you will not get you know the first element or whatever however you will get the base address of a base address is basically the starting address of the array anyways that's not of much significance for us because we'll not be using that in games anyways 
and the next one is quite interesting and it is going to be used quite a lot although the Im implementation in you know game dev is kind of different than what you would expect in other applications so along with variables you can also have pointers to functions so what i mean by that is let's say for example i have this function func over here you can actually have an address to the function so i'll show you guys how to declare that so let's say we want to call this ptr once again so the return type of the function is void and let's just call this ptr and let's go ahead and make this of type int equals and rather than calling the function we are just going to use func so this syntax is really bad so th these are the arguments and this is the name of your pointer and this is the return type of the function basically so instead of all this what you can do is you can just say auto ptr equals func that's going to work totally fine as well so now if you do want to call this function you could either use func over here however so let's say we pass in func of 5 however if you were to notice you can also use ptr so this is also going to call the function so when is this useful let's say we have some sort of an operation which is going to change and you would generally use this for callbacks and timers so basically you would pass a function pointer to a timer so you'd be something you'd say something like call this function after five seconds for example so in order to know which function to call you would pass in a function pointer that's how you you'd use it and for callback functions as well and another use case is going to be let's say we create another copy and let's go ahead and let's just make thousand as what's to be printed here and now if you were to do ptr equals uh, i'll just name this one func2 func2 and if i were to say ptr of 100 okay the argument is kind of useless but you get the point anyways so if i were to go ahead and run a debugger now you have to notice in the first run we got one and in the second run we got thousand and we get the same thing here that's because we did not uh, set the seed for this randomization but anyways, uh, the point of this was to show that two different functions are being called here. So this function was called first because we assigned func to ptr and we assigned func2 to ptr in the second round. So function pointers. And the last thing that I do want to brush upon when it comes to pointers is void pointers. Alright, so now let's go ahead and take a look at void pointers. So it's basically a type of generic pointers and for most cases you would rather use templates in c but anyways i'll just give a small demonstration of what a void pointer can do so let's just go ahead and declare a void pointer let's say void pointer ptr equals null pointer now what we can do is we can go ahead and create two different variables int x and let's say float y now if you have a void pointer you can do something like this so ptr equals ampersand x this is going to work totally fine as well what you can do is you can go ahead and print it out so if i go ahead and type in c out and if i take the value of ptr you will notice that it's not going to let you print it just like that so we can typecast it to an int pointer and get the value of that so notice that I first typecasted it to an int pointer. So you're saying that this void pointer contains an int pointer and then you're getting the value from that using the asterisk. To go ahead and you know point it to the float variable. So now we can also say ptr equals ampersand y and we can just go ahead and print that out as well. So let's head into the next line and let's go ahead and typecast it to a float. And what you can do is you can go ahead and use ptr over here. And if you go ahead and run this, let's initialize this first. So equals 10 maybe, equals 3.2 maybe. So if I go ahead and run this, you would notice that we get the values as expected. 
and not only that you can use void pointers to do stuff like you know swapping two elements generically generally if you write a function to you know swap two elements basically what happens is you specify the data type but using a void pointer you can actually generalize it to swap any elements anyways that's not the scope of uh, this video and I will talk about this maybe a bit later on so that's it for this video guys thanks for watching if you guys did enjoy this video make sure you guys do leave a thumbs up also down there is a link to my patreon if you guys do wish to support me and link to my discord server is down in the video description as well and I'll see you guys next time goodbye